we didn't expect to be so welcome and to have so many customers. And, and actually, we have everything reserved to next year. Just come for holidays with, with my girlfriend in that time. I just fall in love with the, the island. Bienvenidos, amigos, and welcome to Europeans in Taiwan Season 2. Today, we're actually going to make one of the biggest paellas I've ever seen in entire Taiwan. But first, I think we need an introduction of today's guests. My name is Galder John Arginzoni. You can call me John. John, yes, I think I will. It's <laughs> <Sounded> much easier. <laughs> yeah. I'm from Bilbao and I'm running a Spanish restaurant in Kaohsiung. My name is Ramses and I'm coming from Spain. I came to Taiwan like uh, 16 years ago already. We've been open La Caja like almost 15 years. We are one of the oldest Spanish restaurants in Taipei, I can say in Taiwan also. And that is the restaurant that we are here in, yeah, yeah. in today. We are in an institution of the Spanish food. Yes. <laughs> My partner on this adventure is Luis, coming from Spain as well, and both we are musicians at the base. My name is Luis, uh, and I come to Taiwan in 2007. Just come for holidays with, with my girlfriend in that time. I just fall in love with the, the island. Me llamo Germán Rodrigo, soy de Pamplona. Vinimos a Taiwan en el 2011. Mi mujer es de aquí, de Tainan. Nos conocimos en Pamplona, vinimos de vacaciones y surgió la posibilidad de traer aceite de oliva. Y así empezó todo. Some people might recognize Eduardo and uh, Jorge here in the in the corner from last year. Jorge, I thought that you worked at another restaurant. Yeah, yes. Uh, just uh, I come here with uh, good friends to enjoy the the paella and the gathering together. Yeah. So it's still okay to like to visit the competitors. Of course. Of course. Yeah. Okay. No, no competitors. No competitors. No competitors. Okay. No because everyone is the Best, to, no todos amigos. <laughs> yes, yes. Yes. What would you say is like the main difference between living in Europe or in Spain or here in Taiwan? It's like the way of thinking of the people is like more collectively. We are more individualistic thinking. Actually here is much more quiet. Even even here like in a Spanish restaurant, it's very like noisy compared to like a normal restaurant. It's like it's a whole like party feeling right now. Yeah, right? Spanish so, we are noisy. Yeah, it's like <laughs> you put more than four Spanish people in the same room and like the, the audio yeah. levels just go up. Yeah. <laughs> La mayor diferencia que noto yo es a nivel de sociabilidad, de poder salir a la calle, juntarte con amigos, ir a bares, tomarte unas copas, unas tapas, porque luego a todo el mundo le gusta juntarse, disfrutar, pero es muy diferente, muy diferente. The way of life. You have like the second life after work and no the people is like working for living, no living for work. Here is like more focus on make money and work and your life is like became something secondary. And the other thing we do is like, okay, for sure you go to a bar, eat some tapas with friends, have your wine and beer. The sun. The sun. <laughs> In Taiwan have sun, of course, but it's not the sun. But Taipei does not. It's, you have to go down south. <laughs> I always get the question now, is like, you must be already used to the Taiwan weather. You've been here for like so long. Well, actually, I escaped from my town a little bit because of weather. I hate cold and my town is very cold. Here, Spain is cold? In the north. Okay, from the north. In the north in winter is very cold. And when I come here, I feel like, oh my God, it's very good weather. But then it starts to rain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you come here in like August and it was like super warm and then like December, January comes and you're like, <laughs> what is this? Jorge, we're gonna, we're gonna skip the introduction because if people want to know more about you, you should just re-watch last year's video. Yeah. Same with, with Eduardo. You should already know exactly everything about these guys. Talk a little bit more about the, the paella here. Yeah. How common is it to make such a big paella? Is this like a normal size or is this like a massive paella? That's a, for family, I think it's normal size. When, the, when you make a paella, you usually invite like around 10 people. So usually use this kind of size of uh, paella for families. How often would you say that you make a paella? Is it like a weekly thing or like a monthly thing? For example, in my house, uh, what's every Sunday? I think it depends the region of Spain you came from, right? Okay. For example, we are from so, the Middle North, and for us it's like maybe in summer, your mother will do like twice during the summer. Does the paella, like the paella itself, yeah. differ depending on where in Spain you are? Original paella is if you follow the recipe, you can get the original paella. But after, like doing in this spot any kind of rice, we can call it paella. Oh, it's okay. not the paella from Valencia, right? All but right. Still, so we all agree that Va Valencia is like the real paella. Yeah. Yeah. I like to say they have to go to, to Valencia as well and it's real. <laughs>
real paella. <laughs> real paella. So I came over in 2010, and after five years, I married a beautiful Taiwanese girl who's right now is my wife. And in the spring of 2022, we opened Nido Spanish Cuisine, which is a restaurant. Okay. How's it going so far? What What do uh, Taiwanese people think about Spanish food compared to like uh, Taiwanese night market food? We didn't expect to be so welcome and to have so many customers. And and actually, we have everything reserved to next year. September, October, November, December is all full booked. What? And we don't want to give for next year because it's crazy. So when we're still receiving the notifications to, to get to book and we say, sorry, we'll, we'll give them later. So the Taiwanese really love to try food from Spain, from different countries they are really interested in. And of course you have all the links down in the description as well. So you have not only this restaurant, but all the other Spanish restaurants all over Taiwan. Uh, but now I think it's time for us to continue cooking the biggest, world's most famous Taiwanese paella here in Taipei. In Sweden we have an expression that says like the more chefs the worse the food or the worse the soup. You will see that today. <laughs> Can you just walk me through like the basic concept of what what is the paella? Because for me it's like fried rice with seafood. It doesn't actually need to be seafood. Oh really? The original paella it was started in Valencia. Paella is the name of the oh, oh, the pan. Yeah. The pan yeah. Not the food. Now the food. Well, now it's the food. Now it's the food. Okay, okay. But the modern dish we call paella, it seems to be born in the 19th century, close to Valencia. Mm. And it used to be the daily meal of the farmers and the laborers in the farm. They used to cook paella outdoors by the wood fire, and they used to the local products. So rice, vegetables, rabbits, Tomatoes. ducks. That was the original paella valenciana. Can you order the same paella as we are making today? Over over 15 to 20 people, we make the big one. Okay. If you're like one or two people, you can We make one by one. Among the, the restaurant owners here in, in Taiwan, how popular is paella compared to how popular it is in Spain? Yo creo que se come más aquí. <laughs> in Spain, it's very rare. A Spanish guy will order a paella in the night time. It's something more weird in the lunch or in the afternoon, but here, because we open most of the time in the night time, so everybody gather around the paella. Yeah, yeah that was the thing, like, because I know you told me about this last time, that like everything is open like super late. And like me and my fiance, we went to Spain, the, the sunset is around like six, but then the restaurants don't open until like eight or nine. So we're like, what do we do now for like two hours? We have like nothing to do. You drink something and you go to ah. Okay, yeah, that's, that's what we should have done, yeah. Do you have any recommendations for like Taiwanese tourists that want to come and visit Spain? Do you have like a, a top t three things to do or like any special place they should visit? For some other countries, uh, the first option is the capital city. But for us, Spain is so diverse that you should think carefully, should I go to big cities like Barcelona or should I visit the old uh, Arabic architecture and flamenco culture in Andalusia? Or should I go to the beaches or should I go to Camino de Santiago? So many things. Make a nice program. Don't try to embrace many cities. Don't try to embrace many cities. For me, you need to leave the city, right? And okay. you are being comfortable after two days. For sure, if your goal is to put the feet in everywhere, okay, do this way. But for me, you are not enjoying anywhere. See, you take breakfast two or three times in the same place, the guys start to know you. And all of these feelings make you feel the country, right? I have so. to ask you then, if they're only supposed to pick one city to go to, which city in Spain should they go to? I will not say one city because it's not fair for all the cities in the north the coast you just said it was co too cold yeah yeah but but in the north is the coast so it's a little bit it's rainy but if you go in summer it's very nice for me it's the best ir con la mente abierta no vas a encontrarte eh, lo mismo que tú estás acostumbrado a tener en tu país y probar probar cosas probar cosas con la mente abierta y sabiendo que lógicamente es muy diferente a lo que ellos están acostumbrados you brought your now wife mm. to spain it was supposed to last for three months, it lasted six years. What was it that made her fall in love with Spain? Just like Italy, south of France, Spain, Portugal, the Mediterranean area of, of Europe, the south of Europe, we have a way of living different to the north. From the time you wake up and you go breakfast, some wine, some tapas, 
keep eating tapas and wine. So it's like breakfast and then straight to wine. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's like wine there's no beer. lunch in between. We, yeah, this, this is the lunch. You keep the lunch till you go to have a proper lunch. I have to tell you a secret because like last year, me and my fiance was traveling around Europe and we wanted to visit like as many European countries as possible. The weather was terrible and we were just like so tired of it. So we just like took like a last minute flight to Malaga and then we just stayed like one week on the beach in Malaga and it was like the best part of the entire European trip. But don't, don't say that to the other member states. In Sweden we have this like, it's called Pitipanna, which is basically like whatever leftover we have from the week, we just put it together, we fry it up and then we eat it again basically. Pa could paella work like that kind of way as well? Yeah, ropa vieja. That means all clothes. And it's a dish they prepare when you make like a stew with cocido, we call it in Spain, with all leftovers, the all things. Oh, so that's yeah. the all leftovers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And they prepare this dish. And this is the most distinguished paella ever cooked in Taiwan. Taiwan's most famous paella right here. <laughs> now, it's time for us to hopefully eat this paella as well and not only like cooking it, I hope. Minutes. Eduardo, once again, thank you so much for uh, inviting me to this uh, fiesta. Can we call this a fiesta? A yes, paella yeah. fiesta. Fiesta de paella. I remember last year, you said that the number one thing you missed here in Taiwan was the patios. I think we found the Spanish terraza, the most Spanish terraza in entire Taiwan right now. Being the Spanish representative, how would you grade this paella today here, this event? I think we have reproduced the, the Spanish atmosphere and the, and the food. This Sunday morning, the weather in Taipei was not particularly friendly. That's the only difference. It's the only thing you can see that we're still in Taiwan. It rains here in Taipei. <laughs> it was so funny to see, like when we were done with the food, and they, they brought the entire paella in and they were like, they were reopening it to showing like all the guests. And it was almost like, a little ceremony to just like show everyone and like you, you feel the smell when you're here in the actual restaurant and you can really feel same as, as Taiwanese in Spain but you can really feel like it means so much more than just the food yes and and I think that's something that you definitely have in Spain but also like here in Taiwan you know more and more Spanish restaurants in Taiwan where people may uh, enjoy this, this Spanish atmosphere exactly and uh, talking with all these chefs now from literally like all over Taiwan they all said like they were very much welcomed by, by the Taiwanese customers and it seems that Spanish food, rightfully so, is very popular among the Taiwanese like, audience and the Taiwanese restaurant eaters. But I was very surprised because it's, if I think that Taiwanese food and Spanish food, it's completely different. So I was very, very fascinated and surprised that Taiwanese people and Spanish people can actually like enjoy both. That's it, that's it. Have you found anything else that is like, it's completely different compared to Taiwan and Spain, but that you still, as a Spaniard, still truly enjoy here in Taiwan? Nature and people are for me the two biggest uh, points that I find attractive in, in, in Taiwan, that I love. I have the feeling that uh, more and more Taiwanese are getting to Spain for a few days. We talked about this last time. It's a lot of people that will come back to Spain as well. They don't only go like once or twice. They like, I forgot the numbers now, but, but people like continues yeah. to come back. Yeah. And I have been to Spain as well since our last video together, so I missed one of those statistics. But is there anything else other than the Spanish restaurants here in Taiwan that people can do to get like another glimpse of, of the Spanish life, the Spanish history, the Spanish experience here in Taiwan? The historical trace of, of uh, Spain in, in Taiwan, visiting cities uh, like uh, Chilon or, or Tamsui. If you go to Hebin Park, for instance, it will be just a few meters away of the place where the old Spanish fort was built. And just a few hundred meters away are, are the, the remnants of the old Spanish church of Todos los Santos, where the Chilean municipality intends to build a museum. This is not food and drink, but, but also the, the essence of, of Spain or, and our historical connection between, between Taiwan and Spain. You mentioned Damsue, it's like the, the Fort San Domingo, right? I've been there myself and it feels like you're, you're still in Spain. It's like exactly like it's the flashback back to like the, the architecture and, and the design and 
just, it's just beautiful. Are there any other uh, events coming up this year, like from the, the Spanish office? Or uh, what can people expect this year in Taiwan? One is uh, an exhibition of Spanish design. It will take place from early September to end of November, hosted by the Taiwanese um, Institute for, for Research in, in Design. And then let me also mention that um, mid-October we intend to celebrate the Spanish National Day in Kaohsiung. In Kaohsiung? At the Kaohsiung Music Center. Okay. Yeah. And if you want to know any more about Spain or any other of the European member states, you can of course also visit the European Economic Trade Office on social media. And of course we have a Mumu giveaway where you can win some exclusive Mumu line stickers as well. All you have to do is to follow the EETO on social media. Keep your eyes out when this video is being shared by them. Follow the instructions, leave a comment and you have a good chance of winning some EU in Taiwan exclusive products as well. Thank you all so much for watching. My name is Lucas. Start with L as in like, ends with S as in subscribe. Kiss the bell and see you all in the next.